Hello there and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about why your aquarium plants keep dying. Now a lot of people come to me very frequently and they buy fresh aquarium plants for their aquarium which is a good thing. New plants make your aquarium look really green and really vibrant. But one of the problems with that is the fact that people are treating plants as disposable items. Now in reality most of the plants that are sold in an aquarium shop are actually there to be grown and cultivated. But the problem is a lot of people don't really understand what's needed to keep plants alive. And generally what happens is they take the plant home and after a week or two it starts to go brown, starts to go a bit stringy, looking a bit horrible, and then it gets thrown away and replaced with a fresh plant. So in this video I'm gonna show you how to stop that from happening and to actually grow your plants keep them healthy and turn them into a prominent display in your aquarium. So aquarium plants are just like terrestrial plants. In fact, a lot of the plants sold for aquariums are semi-aquatic or sometimes just marginals. But most of them will actually tolerate being grown underwater continuously if you treat them well. Now, just like terrestrial plants, they require three things. They require lighting, they require nutrients, and they require CO2. That's basically what they use to grow and survive. Now, if there's a lack in any of those three things, they won't grow and they may wither and die. However, they are more tolerant of a lack of nutrients and CO2 than they are of a lack of lighting. So let's talk about the lighting to begin with because it is probably the most important part of growing plants. So in the aquarium industry, there is a huge range of different lighting. Some lighting has been designed literally just to illuminate your aquarium and some lighting has been designed specifically for growing certain things. There are different lights for corals as there are different lights for plants. Many of the more specialised lighting is a bit more expensive. The reason it's more expensive is because it's the right wavelength to grow your desired thing. So in terms of plant lighting, whether it's LED or tube lighting, the wavelength emitted from that particular light has been designed specifically to grow plants. Now a lot of the time when you buy an aquarium it will come with a basic tube light or it will come with a basic LED. Most of the time these are either no good for growing plants or only good for growing the really low light and very tough plants. So initially if you're taking plants home and you find that they're not doing very well and they're going brown and dying the most likely reason for that is the fact that your lighting just isn't up to par. Now, to get a light that's actually any good for growing plants, there will be an outlay of money because plant lights are a bit more expensive than regular lights. This particular one is a Kessel and this is actually probably one of the more expensive lights you can get. However, as you can see, it is amazing at growing plants. So the first thing I would suggest you do is upgrade your lighting. So once you have your lighting situation sorted, the next thing you need to do is feed your plants. Plants need to be fed, just like your tomato plants or your marigolds, they will need some food. Now, in the aquarium world, feeding is actually quite easy. There's two options generally. The first one are root tabs. So these go into your substrate, and from these tablets, the plants will draw pretty much all the nutrients they need. Now these tablets tend to last around six months, so they're one of these things that you don't have to do too often, but they will definitely benefit your plants. They generally as well have all the nutrients plants need to grow. Now another option is the liquid feed. Liquid feeds need to be done more regularly, normally around once a week, but these are also a good solution to the feeding problem. One downside to liquid feeds is they benefit plants which take nutrients through their leaves rather than most of the plants which are sold in the aquatic industry which take nutrients through their roots. So out of the two, if you can get the nutrient tablets, these are normally the better option. If you're really clever, before you set your aquarium up, you can actually use a fertilizing substrate underneath your main substrate. And this will mean you won't need to add either the liquid or the tablet feeds because this basically acts as a soil. You just add a centimetre or two below your main sand or gravel and then you can plant your plants directly into these and never have to worry about feeding again. 
there is also a huge selection of different types of fertilizers available. Once you get into the extreme growing of plants, you can dose particular elements for them as and when they need it. But generally, these are more for the specialist plant growers. Now, finally, the third thing you need is CO2. Unlike us, rather than breathing oxygen, plants breathe CO2 and they use that to photosynthesize. So it's quite important in terms of keeping them alive. Now in the aquarium, there is basically two options to giving your plants CO2. The first option, and probably the best option, is the gas. Now, it's a little bit fiddlier and it is more expensive than the second option. However, gas CO2 is the most effective for giving your plants that CO2 that they need. Now, what you do with this, and this is quite a large canister, by the way, there are smaller ones available. So the basic overview of a gas CO2 system is CO2 comes out of this canister, goes into your aquarium via some pipe work and a diffuser, and then the CO2 will dissolve into your water and the plants will take the CO2 from the water and use it to grow. So you're basically directly giving them that CO2 that they need to grow and it raises the CO2 above the atmospheric level. So when you use gas CO2 in combination with the nutrients and good lighting, plants will grow amazingly. The second option is the liquid CO2 and it is becoming a more popular option these days. Now, it isn't technically CO2, it is a form of carbon that is usable by the plants in the water, and it's normally a chemical called glutaraldehyde. So the liquid CO2 is basically uh, an easier version of adding a usable form of carbon to your aquarium so that the plants can use it to grow. Now, it is a bit less effective. It's probably a 6 out of 10 if the gas is a 10 out of 10, but it still adds a very valuable source of carbon to your plants. Now what you do with this is every day normally you fill up your cup and you add the correct amount of the liquid to your aquarium. That will add the carbon and then the plants can use that to grow. Out of using this or not using this, using it is definitely a massive advantage to your plants. So if you're not feeling up to using the CO2 system, then pick up a bottle of the liquid CO2. Now there are lots of different ranges available. There's one by Seachem called Excel. There is one called Easy Carbo, and there's also this one by Microblift, all of which are very similar. They just vary in strengths, but they will all have the same effect on your plants. So I hope that's helped you from stopping your plants from dying. So thank you for watching. I hope this video has been interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching, and happy fish keeping.